Welcome to the tutorial, money reading, ship or method. First, make a start hole using different tools. Stone punch for rocky soil. Co auger for compact soil. Spiral auger for soft soil. Combination for loose sand. Let's see how the stone punch works. <laughs> How am I down? Swing around to lose it. Lift it up 1090 degrees. Repeat this five times. Then empty it and start again. How to use an auger? Push it slightly down while turning it five times. Then lift it and empty it and start again. Make your stub hole as deep as possible. Use extension tips to make the tools longer, max on 12 meters. Proceed to the next step when you can't lift soil with any of these tools anymore. Correct soil samples for each meter and fill the drill rock. Write down soil type, drill speed, minutes per meter, and water level. Keep doing this until the borehole is completed. We need that information later. Prepare site for use to drill with fluid. Make two or three settling pits and connect them with channels. Prepare drilling fluid from clay, organic matter, bentonite, or polymer. The drill fluid does three functions. To lift cuttings to the surface, to stabilize and coat the borehole hole, to avoid collapsing because the fluid is providing counter pressure. Always keep the borehole full of drill fluid and make sure the drill fluid is thick enough. Position the tripod so it is centered above the starter hole. And one of the legs is in line with the pullers. Choose a drill bit. 3 inch bit if to start in a hard cell. 4 inch bit to start in a normal cell or widen hard cell. 5 inch or bigger bit for limbing or widening of the bubble. The first drill pipe is extra heavy, we call it wet pipe. After that, add normal drill pipes. And don't forget to clean the connections with water. With jetting, drilling fluid is pumped down through the drill pipes into the borehole. The fluid then comes up between the drill pipes and the borehole hole. Cuttings are lifted from bottom to the surface and will sink in settling pits before it is pumped back into the borehole. 
Jetting with pump percussion, pull up the pipe slowly, release them fast so they can hit they hit the bottom hard. At the bottom, turn 90 degrees to the right. Wait 4 seconds, then repeat these steps and reposition the impact by 30 degrees each time. Never turn to the left at the bottom because you unscrew the pipes and loosen them. Jetting with pump. Flashing mode. To lift heavy curtains to the surface, increase pump speed and slowly move drill pipes up and down. Don't hammer now. Hand reading without a pump. There are two methods with a valve or with a hand acting as a valve. We will have a look how the hand work as a valve. Hand reading. Use the same open drill bits. Pull up the pipe slowly and release them first to hit the bottom hard. At the bottom, turn 90 degrees to the right and repeat this. Again, deposition the impact by 30 degrees each time. Sludging to remove cuttings. The drill fluid is sucked up through the pipes and returns back in the borehole via the settling pits. Keep the pits full so drill fluid can always enter the borehole. Flashing by hand, close pipe while going up, open it while going down. Instead of your hand, you can use a back piece. Position the piece in the starter hole where it has enough space. <laughs> Always flush out materials before taking a break or adding pipes. Otherwise, cuttings who are on their way up will sink down and fill the borehole. During a work break, always lift the drill pit from the bottom at least 2 meters so it will not get stuck when the borehole collapses. A borehole can collapse if the hole is not full of drilling liquid because of missing counter pressure or when the fluid is too thin and the soil structure is loose. To get a stuck drill pipe out, increase the thickness of the drill fluid if needed. Broad drill fluid with a second pipe next to the pipe that is stuck to loosen the collapsed soil and pour as hard as you can. When a pipe has broken, you can fish it out using the fish hook and the fish pin that is in each drill pipe. Connecting the fish hook to a normal drill pipe. Hook it on the pin in the broken pipes and lift the pipes slowly. Remember to take soil samples and record soil type and drill speed in your drill log. When drilling with fluid, you need to wash the samples and carefully inspect the cuttings. After you have drilled that as deep as possible, it is now time to design your casing. Use the drill rod to see where the best permeable layer is. That is normally a layer with sandy soil and where drilling went fast. The filter screen of your casing must be at that position. A long filter screen gives more water than a short one. Preparing the casing pipe. You can buy filter screens or make it yourself. To make it, cut slots and clean them. You can see that in the manual. Cross the bottom of the casing, make the socket connections and check them. Prepare gravel pipe. Of size 2 to 5 mm. 6 to 8 buckets of 20 liters, depending on the length of the filter screen. Wash the gravel. Installation of casing. The next steps are critical and you can take a break in between. So prepare on site the casing pipes, gravel pack, PVC glue, as much clean water as you can store, and dig a channel to remove drill fluid. Backwash without casing. Remember always keep the bobo full of water. 
pump in water into the hole to wash it. But not too much because the hole becomes weaker now. If one of the soil layers is too weak, then skip this step. Remove the pipes carefully and check water level. Instead casing pipes carefully and make sure each connection is strongly glued and pressed well and straight in the socket. Again, keep the hole full of water to provide counter pressure. After inserting the casing pipe, we can now backwash the borehole from within the casing pipe, pumping water in the casing pipe. Now we can clean it much more because there is less danger of collapsing. Add green gravel all around the pipe while shaking the pipe so the gravel doesn't get stuck. Check with a small pipe if the correct level of the gravel pack has been reached. It should be 2 meters above the filter screen. When we, we, we are swabbing, now this is the swabbing. Developing the well by swabbing to open the filter slots, the gravel pack and the wall of the bowl. Move the swabbing tool slowly down and fast up. Make sure to swab over the full length of the filter screen. Now we need to clean the borehole more and we need to test how much water the borehole produces. Developing the well by pump testing. Pump as much as fast as you can and count buckets per hour. Alternate pump tests with swabbing a few times until water becomes clean and pump tests produces more water. The gravel might have gone down, so check it again and add it needed. Hygiene coating. Add cement mortar or compact clay on top of the gravel to seal the pneumatic barrier and prevent contamination by surface water. The seal only works if it is between the pipe and compact soil layer, so check your drill rock for the required length of the seal. After that, backfill with normal soil between the pipe and borehole until half meter under the surface, fill the remaining half meter with concrete. Make the apron, drainage and soak it according to smart standards. Check the manual. If you don't have the manual, get one at www.jakana.org.
Finally, install a pump according to your customer needs and the results of the pump test. Thank you. Remember that simple is not easy.